I've often wondered why it's important uh, to be involved with laboratories in general and scientific research. When I got involved with the Jackson Laboratory, the answer became quite clear. Our future health, the future health of the planet, the future health of our bodies, of our children, of our society, is really based on the basic science that starts at institutions like the Jackson Laboratory. The Jackson Laboratory, which was founded in 1929, has contributed significantly to the understanding of biomedical problems. George Snell in 1980 won a Nobel Prize for understanding the basis of transplantation biology. The first bone marrow transplantations were done by Elizabeth Russell. Uh, stem cell work was uh, initiated here by Leroy Stevens. And very importantly, Doug Coleman identified the, the hormonal basis of obesity, winning him the Lasker Prize and the Shaw Prize as well. About two dozen Nobel laureates based their work on reagents, resources, and capabilities provided by the Jackson Laboratory. The thing I've, I've always admired about what goes on at the Jackson Laboratory is that uh, they're not afraid to tackle problems that are of biomedical significance. My group here at the Jackson Laboratory uh, works on uh, developing mouse models so we can understand what the genetic basis is for type 1 diabetes. Unfortunately, type 1 diabetes uh, generally occurs in children and oftentimes in very, very young children. Molly has type 1 diabetes, and the first question people ask us is when she will grow out of it, and you don't grow out of type 1 diabetes. It's 24-7, it doesn't go on vacation, it is with her the rest of her life. 30 to 40 different genes are interactively contributing to the disease, and we're trying to wade through this morass and try to understand just what these genes are and what they do. I know they work on diabetes research at the Jackson Laboratory, Molly's young enough, so maybe in her lifetime, they'll find an answer. We're focusing right now on uh, two types of brain cancer, and most aggressive form of gliomas are incurable. So we're trying to figure out the biology of cancer stem cells and figure out ways so we can um, molecularly target them. The information is, is new. It's, it's kind of a new perspective on cancer biology. And I think the data that we're generating are going to have some really important consequences for developing therapeutics and diagnostic tools um, for, for cancer research. We are a National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. We also do tremendous work in neurosciences, particularly in Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, uh, motor disorders. We have a strong glaucoma research program programs in osteoporosis and metabolic disorders, including diabetes and cardiovascular disorders as well. We freely collaborate and share resources with each other, but also with the outside world as well. The impact of our work at the Jackson Laboratory goes beyond the basic science that we do. We provide important resources to 16,000 laboratories worldwide in the form of the 5,000 different mice strains that we have that develop different disorders. The work that the Jackson Laboratory has done with regard to developing mouse models that will help us understand the human variants that we see in drug response have been uh, unbelievably incalculable. Our educational program um, has really three major thrusts. Number one, to inspire young budding scientists the second is really to disseminate the very technical and difficult technologies that we have in terms of mouse genetic manipulation. And then the third is the assembling of experts to discuss the complexity of disease in such a way that we can actually advance the field. The summer student program here is great. These kids bring questions. Um, and, and an enthusiasm to learning about science that's sort of reinvigorating um, and, and very inspirational. I'm really grateful to be here at the Jackson Lab because of the opportunity to do real research and do things that are really relevant to people's lives. This isn't a practice experiment about lab technique, it's real research that we're getting to do here. Uh, Jackson Lab has been crucial in the development of, uh, of, of modern cancer research from several points of view. It's trained a lot of the great people who've done that research. Uh, it has uh, provided uh, uh, mouse models that all of us use. 
that's informed many of the approaches to uh, our modern understanding of the genetics of cancer. Complex genetics is really the next frontier. How different genes interact with each other to give us a disease, how it maintains health, is the greatest challenge. The work we do at the Jackson Laboratory allows the scientific community to understand the complexity of disease. When I think about it, cancer as an abstract disease, obviously, you know, I think that we should do the best science and just take our time doing the best we can. But when I think about them at individual levels, I feel that urgency, that sense of, okay, every day counts and every moment counts and we really need to push to find a cure. One of the things I find really interesting is how many times a Jack's mouth, a Jack's uh, process, or a Jack scientist has played a role in the discoveries of others. The research community would experience a brownout if Jackson Lab went down. We're at a remarkable time in science. The power of the technologies, the speed of discovery, and the scope of what we know is unparalleled. Um, unfortunately, these all come with a very high price tag. Governments have been our mainstay for funding, uh, but we will need more help from our philanthropic community. If there's one thing you should know about the Jackson Laboratory, it is that at some point in your future, either you, a loved one, a family member, or a close friend will experience some devastating disease. It is the discovery of the cure for those diseases that happens at the Jackson Laboratory. And that's why it's very important to support the Jackson Laboratory.